just been watching an interesting old clip from 1967 and it's entitled Trial by Television, or Trial by Media, Trial by Television. Um, and it's a famous exchange between the great broadcaster David Frost and Emil Savundra, who was a Sri Lankan businessman and swindler. Um, the background of this case, I didn't know anything about it, so I had to look it up. Uh, this is what the Wikipedia article says. Uh, Emil Savundra, um, it had a very long name, but usually known as Emil Savundra, 1923 to 1976, was a Sri Lankan swindler. The collapse of his fire, auto and marine insurance company left about 400,000 motorists in the United Kingdom without coverage. So basically, um, this was um, a sort of talk show format on Red Diffusion London, which was a, it's a now defunct channel that was operating in London from the mid 50s to the late 60s. Um, and this ostensibly was an opportunity for Savundra to kind of come clean and maybe apologize to the victims of this. Um, but throughout the interview, he came across as very arrogant even contemptuous of the people he had swindled, calling the peasants and saying that he had no legal or moral responsibility. There is some debate over whether or not he had um, taken some sort of medication that was affecting his logic before this, I don't know, but he ended ignominiously, he served eight, he served eight years in prison and died a drug addict, so um, he had quite an ignominious end. But throughout the interview, um, he came across as quite arrogant and dismissive of the very people who's, uh, who's, who were hurt by the collapse of his company and the fact they'd been misled, including a woman whose husband died in a car crash and she too had been injured. Um, so it's, it makes for some very compelling viewing. But anyway, I thought that would be a good kind of avenue to look at media influence and trial by media. Now, to me, in this case, this guy done himself no favours. Um, he just totally washed his hands of the whole thing and he seemed to openly show contempt and disrespect to the very people that he had hurt. If he'd even shown some sort of sympathy for what they had been through, it might have put him in a better stead. But anyway, it it resulted in quite a testy exchange between David Frost and this guy Savundra um, and it ended up with Frost saying this isn't the way we want it to end it up, you know, kind of I tried my best and the audience you could vis you could hear them say well done Frosty, it was quite a quite compelling viewing and I would say landmark um, so it's worth checking out um, you may remember the case um, if you, you know, if you're of that generation. I must admit, I'm, I'm totally new to it, so I had to look this up last night, but it made for some compelling viewing. Anyway, um, 60s was really a turning point when it came to media influence, when it came to the power that the press has. Of course, there was television before that, there was television in the 50s, but the 60s, I would say, was really a turning point in terms of how television was being used as a medium. Um, politicians had to be a lot more assertive in how they dealt with the press from then on in a way that they didn't need to be before. I mean, there was yellow journalism at the turn of the century and the power of the big press barons was immense. Um, but television media, I think, only really became powerful from the 60s onwards, because before that it was quite sanitized and quite safe. I think the 60s something really changed. Um, and whilst this particular example, like I say, Savundra came across as pretty arrogant, um, and Frost was doing his job as a, as a journalist, one can also argue perhaps that Frost was acting the talk show host more than. Um, just trying to get the truth, but then a lot of people would look at that would say Frost was just holding this guy to account. And that is where, when I phoned into the Nick Ferrari show, um, brought up the issue of doorstepping, that was Ferrari's defence. He said that if you need a politician to, or a business person 
to do an interview and there's no other way to contact him. That was his defense of doorstepping. I'm still critical. I still think it's, uh, you know, unfair they bring the person's family into it. So I retorted to Ferrari um, that in that case, just let the public decide. Just say this politician has refused our interviews, but I, I'm against doorstepping. Anyway, um, this thing about trial by media, that's what the video is entitled and I'll put a link to it. It's a very interesting subject because if we look at high profile campaigns, an obvious example of this in recent years is the Me Too movement. What you have is a situation where high profile men have been accused of very serious um, misconduct, sexual harassment and even rape. Now, my take on the Me Too thing is that there is definitely merit in it. There is definitely powerful men who have abused their position and they've got away with it for too long. We know from the Jimmy Savile situation, and I know that's getting into the realm of, of children, but we know from the Jimmy Savile situation that for years he was protected by his celebrity status and his power. And it was only after he died that the full horror of his crimes were exposed. And the BBC was there very red faced because it looked like an establishment cover-up. Well, it was an establishment cover-up. So it may be that the media has to constantly play this balancing act of holding people to account, um, whilst also not going too far the other way. Because, I mean, you can look at the two examples, Jimmy Savile, Cliff Richard, one was guilty, one was innocent. Uh, one was protected by the establishment and the other was unfairly uh, targeted by the establishment and there was a whole raiding of Mr. Cliff Richard's house uh, and he was an innocent man. So I think there is an issue with trial by media in the sense that when we look at Me Too, we hear about high profile men who have been accused, accused of misconduct and what happens? They are immediately uh, disassociated from any organisation they have connections with. You know, they're dropped from advertisement uh, endorsements, they're dropped from any charities they're associated with, they're dropped from pretty much everything. And it's like their entire reputation is being put on on the on the dock in the dock um, before they've even went before a court of law. Now, in the case of Harvey Weinstein, I have my views on Weinstein. I think he's, my gut feeling is he is guilty based on the sort of attitude that he has put out, based on um, evidence that has been produced, based on, I mean, the fact he's paying some of the victims out now, uh, to me, an innocent man wouldn't do that. To me, an innocent man would say, I, I'm not going to pay out for something I haven't done. I'm going to fight this in a court of law. So I definitely think that Weinstein is a very, very shady character. Um, but again, you know, you get into the establishment, in this case, Hollywood, where powerful people in the industry, like Meryl Streep, knew what was going on and done nothing. And now they're joining the bandwagon. Um, so that let down young victims of uh, abusive men in powerful positions. But I am concerned. I have to be honest, I'm concerned with this trend of trial by media. The way I see it is if someone is facing serious allegations, then they need to appear in a court of law as soon as possible. This One of the problems with me too is we've seen very few actual trials. We have seen a lot of situations of men being accused, high profile men in Hollywood, Dustin Hoffman and many others accused or Kevin Spacey of, you know, basically very serious sexual misconduct. And for me, it's not, it's actually irrelevant whether I believe they're guilty or not. What matters is due process. And the thing about due process, that isn't just in favour of the accused, it's actually in favour of the victim as well. Because due process means a trial, that means the victim will, if it's done properly, get justice. No trial means the victim has to wait for justice. Actually, the thing about due process isn't just about defending the right of the accused. It's actually about defending the right of the alleged victim for justice. 
And my biggest concern about me too is the fact that we are seeing the situation where high profile file men are just being accused and then there is a certain contingent that just looks at that as no, that equals guilt. I mean, a lot of feminists will immediately just say, oh, well, I believe women, so he must be guilty. And they might put the caveat, oh, well, yeah, due process, I find him guilty. But they still endorse the idea that his entire reputation is destroyed. Now, I find that quite troubling. I take the view, if he's guilty, zero sympathy. You know, he should serve time uh, and he should pay for that. But without a trial in a court of law, then you're left with this trial by media. And I find that particularly in the United States where the media is so powerful, it's dangerous. And the thing about celebrities is it can kind of go both ways because on one hand, I mean, you get the other side where their fanboys will go out of the way to defend them um, no matter what, and they might well be guilty. But then you get, you know, if the person might be controversial to begin with or unpopular to begin with, then people are going to have this bias against them in a way that an ordinary guy wouldn't have. On the other hand, an ordinary guy can't buy his way out of it. I think it's fundamentally wrong, for example, that Weinstein can buy his way out of justice. And that exposes a real problem in the American justice system, which is that if this goes ahead, uh, then it's, it's a system based on money, um, based on the fact you can just buy your way out of justice. That is fundamentally wrong. You know, does that mean that a guy who doesn't have the financial means to buy his way out of justice, although, like I say, an innocent man shouldn't be doing that anyway, but there's clearly a discrepancy there. So let me know what do you think about trial by... I mean, actually, I'm talking about trial by media here. What perhaps is more significant today is trial by social media. And this is something that can affect absolutely anyone. There was an example recently, I forget her name, but a woman posted a politically incorrect tweet to 170 people, 170 Twitter followers, and she was absolutely nobody. She was just someone who posted a politically incorrect tweet about going to Africa, hope I don't get AIDS, but then again, I'm white. Now, it's, you know, it's pretty on PC. It's not something I would say. But what happened was she became the number one trending topic on Twitter. I mean, to me, Twitter above anything else. You know, it's not often you hear about people getting in hot water for something they wrote on Facebook. It seems to be Twitter is the one that seems to be the really dicey medium, which is why I avoid it. I do find it troubling that there can be this sort of mob mentality online and to be honest we've probably all been guilty of it we've probably all responded emotively to a particular news report or a particular story i know i have and the problem with that is sometimes we're responding without knowing all the facts i've been guilty of it i put my hands up here i'm guilty i've done it i have got angry reading something and maybe i didn't know all the facts so we all need to be careful what we read online. There is an issue of fake news, which I think is a serious problem. Um, and I think it's actively promoted by Russia and China, but that's in the political sphere. In terms of credibility of individuals, again, this is something we need to be very careful of. It doesn't mean that allegations aren't sound. It doesn't mean that there isn't evidence there. But the power that social media has is such that it just seems troubling to me that someone's entire reputation in life can be turned upside down because of a moment's stupidity um, or one throwaway comment or one off-colour joke. It just seems very, very even sinister. Because if we're going to go down that line. Some people are more reckless on social media than they should be. But if we are going to crucify, metaphorically, people who have said something they shouldn't have said, then we need to be prepared to really look at ourselves and say, am I innocent? Have I never said something stupid? Have I ever never said something hurtful without thinking? You know? So I'm all for people being responsible for their own words. And I'm not for a second saying that people shouldn't be criticised, but 
I do find it troubling the power that social media has to destroy people. The way I see it is if someone has committed a crime, if they have been exposed for some really obviously racist or sexist or homophobic viewpoints, then it's a legitimate that, you know, well, it, it's inevitable that they're going to face controversy. But should that mean that their whole life is turned upside down, that they lose a job, that they lose their entire reputation? I think if we're going to go down that path, it's, you know, it's one that could potentially be quite dangerous because then we're going to end up in a big brother society. So by all means, if someone says something stupid and offensive and insensitive, they can be challenged. But we see a situation now with social media in particular. I mentioned, I mean, my pitch with this video was trial by media. I think trial by social media is probably more apt nowadays because it is so, so powerful. And I think that people need to remember that. That's why they need to be careful about what they say. It's a pity, but that's the way it's going. And it also reiterates the point that we can never, ever be complacent when it comes to freedom of expression. I mean, there's a caveat there. With freedom of expression comes responsibility. But, you know, when we look at countries like China and other authoritarian states where people, you know, can be imprisoned for saying the wrong thing, we can't be too smug about our own situation because it is not actually 100% secure. And when people are being threatened with losing their jobs and they're absolutely being pilloried for they have even been tried in a court of law, I find that quite troubling. And I think that the tabloid press have a lot to answer for in terms of how they report things. I mean, supposedly British journalists need to sign up their code of conduct. If you look at the masthead in newspapers, they all say we are members of the um, the press complaint. I'll see if I can find the exact terminology here. This from the eye. Excuse me, I just want to get this terminology correct. That's not convenient right now, but anyway. Ostensibly, all British newspapers and journalists need to sign up their code of conduct. But in reality, the, you know, what you'll get with the tabloids is they will attack someone in a particular way and they'll cover themselves by saying alleged. But then they'll say something like uh, racist idiot or uh, Ramona MP allegedly, so, you know, so their bias is already there and they don't even try to hide it. Those are just two loose examples. So the quality of journalism in our tabloid press is frankly pathetic. It's, it's almost non-existent. They'll cover themselves. You know, they'll, they'll be careful not to outright lie about people. And they'll, they'll put the word alleged. But the, the whole style of reporting is blatantly obvious. And I, I don't think it's a credit to the industry. It's powerful, it's influential, but I don't think it's credit to the industry. Anyway, um, that's my thoughts. The, the truth of the matter is, this is something, it's like a Frankenstein's monster. I don't think that it can fully be curtailed at this point. I think social media is so big and so powerful that it can't be fully curtailed. But what we can do is think about how we respond to it. You know, so the next time you hear about someone has done some terrible thing, I'm not saying be neutral, okay? We're going to have opinions, but maybe just try and look at more than one source, try and find the full picture at least, and then judge the person. But just remember that distortion can be rampant on social media and it is very hard to control.